a great opportunity for this Panther team to upset a second best team in college football. It's a tall order, but it's going to be a lot of fun in one of college football's best atmospheres. We got a special opportunity today, fellas. Let's go, man. Stay tuned. A lot of people doubt us today. We're going to show the nation right here. I pick and play with anyone. Let's go. I don't care what number they are. We ready. Let's go. One is 11, 11 is 1. D block on three. One, two, three. You got to believe it right now before you step on that field. This is your opportunity. Number two in the country. Let's go grab it and let's go take it. How are we doing, folks? Your host, Moose, here on the Pitt Panthers Football Network as we get ready for the number two Clemson Tigers storming into Heinz Field to take on the number 15 Pitt Panthers. The Panthers, of course, 5-1 and one overall, 1-1 one and one in the ACC, coming against 7-0 and o Clemson in a big battle. There's going to be three folks in attendance for the Panthers as well, a couple of big targets. A uh, big one is Bill May, uh, an athlete projected potentially as a defensive end or a linebacker that the Panthers really would be excited to bring in. And if we take a look at the Stangs, it would be a huge win for them in the conference Stangs as well. They're trying to keep pace with Miami, who's 3-0 and in the conference, whereas Clemson, with a win here, can pretty much wrap up the ACC Atlantic, essentially, going to 6-0 and in conference, 8-0 overall, if they can come away with a win. So it's going to be a massive win. Two really high-powered offenses going to take place against each other both top 10 scoring offenses in the country so it's going to be an absolute matchup to behold so sit back and enjoy so opening drive after the kickoff the Panthers start off with James Connor taking a handoff up the middle for about 15 yards and Connor he's going to be a big story in this game if he can beat back that Clemson defense he'll possibly force the you know open up the passing attack for the Panthers. It hasn't been dominant, but it's been decent. And Peterman, oh my word, just two plays later, he nearly has a touchdown as he had Jester Wheel wide open for an absolute bomb, but unfortunately he's not able to find him, and the Panthers would be forced to punt. Deshaun Watson coming off a 331-yard, three touchdown. He did have a rushing touchdown performance against Florida State in a massive overtime victory, and he picks up right where he left off with an 11-yard carry. Then just two plays later, Watson drops back. He's looking, 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 finds Wayne Gallman Jr. on a screen, and the senior running back gets plenty of yardage all the way into the Panther territory on a 28-yard catch. Just one play later, Watson drops back. He looks, 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 and he throws an absolute strike to Ray Ray McLeod. Five-yard touchdown pass, and just like that, Clemson strikes first. If things go that way, it could be a long day at the office for the Panthers defense. After they're unable to score on their next possession, Clemson with the ball again. Deshaun Watson fights off a huge missed tackle from the Panthers secondary, and he reels off an absolutely massive run. One price. The Panthers' star defensive end is the one that actually has to chase him down, push him out of bounds after about a 50, 60 yard run. And then just two plays later, he looks for choice on the screen, but thankfully the Panthers stop him for a seven yard loss and push Clemson into a field goal try. And you can see. Uh, Jordan Whitehead is fired up that they were able to at least stuff this high part Clemson offense for the first time. But the Panthers on their ensuing drive try the wide receiver option here as Quadri Henderson gets outside. And again, he's just not able to get the edge on the Clemson secondary. But it's a good solid seven-yard gain, which the Panthers would get a first down on. Peterman, though. After the first down, this is just an absolutely abysmal play. If you watch the replay, it looked like he was looking for Orndorff, but he put the ball so far behind him that it was almost like he was throwing to the Clemson defensive back. And then two plays later on third and five, it's a great throw by Deshaun Watson to find Renfro, but unfortunately he's not able to turn up field. Terrace Webb wraps him up, and it'd be fourth and one, and the Panthers need a huge stop. It's a handoff to die. He's wrapped up by Jordan Whitehead, and it's a massive stop that is going to get the Panthers fired up the Jordan Whitehead just busts through the hole wraps up the Clemson running back and sits him down in the Panthers defense is fired up that they make a huge stop but unfortunately after a sack of Nathan Peterman for loss of eight yards they are backed up towards their goal line but a great 21 yard strike finds Jester Wea in tight coverage and the Panthers at least get out of the shadow of their end zone third and five though Nate Peterman has a wide open Quadri Henderson I don't know if he's feeling the pressure whatever it is but he He's not able to find his receivers, and the Panthers have to punt the ball away yet again. So Deshaun Watson, though, he is brought down, sacked for a loss of nine yards by Jeremiah Teleni. Big stop by one of the Panthers' reserve defensive tackles. 
but after a punt from Clemson, then a punt from Pitt, nothing has really happened, and Clemson still with a 10-0 lead. Great throw from Deshaun Watson, finding Renfro again to start chunking the Panthers' defense. This time, he finally hooks up with his big target, Mike Williams, for a 19-yard catch as they move down the field with the greatest of ease. Uh, the Panthers, you know, little bits of pressure. They find him there, but unfortunately, it's a great throw. Deion Kane gets out of the clutches of Avante Maggs. Look at Watson as he drops back, somehow weasels his way away from the Panthers' coverage and fires a strike that Deion Kane brings in. Clemson, they're turning this potentially into a rout as they go up 17-0 midway through the second quarter. Peterman, though, third and nine on the ensuing Panther drive. He finds Quadri Henderson. The Panthers are on the 44-yard line, fourth and three, and you know what? They have to go for it. There's nothing else they can do. Peterman feeling the pressure. A late corner blitz. What a throw from Nathan Peterman. The composure to find Trey Tipton, who turns into a 20-yard catch and run. Peterman just lofts it up there, knowing Tipton is free from coverage. He hauls it in and is able to get a good, solid chunk of yards in the Panthers end. A couple of plays later, they find James Conner on a little draw. He chunks the Clemson defense for 20 yards, and the Panthers finally in scoring range if they can cut into this Clemson lead. And it would be that man, the inspirational leader of the Panthers, James Conner, gets in from one yard out, and the Panthers finally are on the board at home and get this Heinz Field crowd a little bit livened up. The Panther pit, of course the pit student section, finally showing some life here or having reason to cheer. And it's another big sack on second down. As you can see, uh, Shakir Soto gets into the backfield to make a sack. And that was one of the stories here was Deshaun Watson was fantastic passing the ball. You see him make a throw here to Deion Kane for 11 yards that unfortunately for Clemson would result in them having to punt the ball away. But the Panthers were able to get a fair amount of pressure on uh, Deshaun Watson. There's no doubt about that. So in spite of how well he did passing the ball, they limited his opportunities by at least cutting down on that. And the Panthers, as they drive down the field late on here, good third and four conversion to Quadri Henderson, then a great play in motion as Peterman finds Jester Wea for a nice long chunk of yards. Third and two now, Peterman rolls out wide. He gets down and just barely gets a first down, takes a huge hit. Panthers have to use their last timeout, so they come out in a five wide set with really their final play, last chance to get in the end zone before they have to try a field goal. Peterman drops back. He puts the ball on an absolute postage stamp finds Quadri Henderson on the out route, the corner route, and he puts the ball exactly where it needs to, where the only person who could bring it in was Quadri Henderson. The Panthers with a touchdown with just two seconds to play in the second half cut things to just a three-point Clemson lead, and in a game that might look like it will evaporate into a blowout, very quickly, the Panthers are right back in the thick of things. So as we take a look at some of the big plays from the first half, some things we can note. Clemson, very well chunking the Panthers through the air. We know they would do that with that tough, uh, you know, not great Panthers pass coverage. But they're doing really well in run support of the Panthers, other than that big chunk of yards that they gave up to Deshaun Watson on that read option play. They're doing well shutting down the Clemson running game for the most part and keeping things close. They're doing the uh, bend but not break approach and the Panthers offense has finally come alive and Nate Peterman with a couple of huge plays both with his feet and his legs to get first downs for the Panthers. So Clemson, 127 on the ground. Majority of those came from Deshaun Watson. He's got about 80, 85 yards running already. Panthers with 93 so they do want to get their rushing game even more in sync but it's good to see that they're going kind of toe to toe with this Clemson offense just for the moment. If they limit away that turnover that Peterman had, you know, maybe things are even better the way this offense is going. But at halftime, can the Panthers turn it around? We shall see. So we pick things up in the second half here where Clemson's opening drive sees Deshaun Watson utilizing that play action fake. He's able to find his fullback, Garrett Williams, for a nice chunk of 12 yards to get the first down. Uh, two plays later, though, second and 16, Watson drops back. He's going for a screen, and it's a turnover! 
Folston's got it. James Folston, the right end, is able to get in on the ball, and he collects it out of midair, and the Panthers take over in unbelievable field position. It was Jeremiah Teleni again getting pressure on Deshaun Watson, his second quarterback hit of the day, and he's able to force what would end up being ruled a fumble. Folston picks it up, takes it about 20, 25 yards to about the 10-yard line, and two plays later, Nate Peterman forcing his way forward. He actually gets the pylon, but they don't rule him in the end zone somehow, so the Panthers would be resort, resort to first and goal, handing off to James Conner, and it's a zero-yard touchdown run. That tells you how close they were to the end zone, and just like that, a huge turnover that you don't expect from a Heisman candidate like Deshaun Watson, and the Panthers are in the lead, but Clemson, not one to sit down and take that. That's why they're the number two team in the country. They hand the ball off to Wayne Gallman, and he finds a huge hole in the middle of the Panthers' defense and goes for 41 yards. Next play, Deshaun Watson runs that read option. It's been so dangerous to the Panthers and picks up 16 more, and Clemson's in a very dangerous scoring position. Second and eight, though. Deshaun Watson drops back. He's looking, he's looking, he throws. Deion Kane gets the ball, and Ryan Lewis makes a huge tackle to actually stop Clemson on the goal line, and they try the handoff to Adam Choice on first down. He's not able to get in. Can the Panthers come up with a huge stop? Reggie Mitchell gets into the backfield with a great timely pressure uh, to pick up Adam Choice. Again, his second try he doesn't get in the end, so third and goal. Now, Watson drops back. He looks for the quick throw, but he's not able to find anyone. It's only his second incompletion on the day, but it is a huge one. So the Panthers, after facing first and goal from about the half-yard line, hold Clemson to a field goal and manage to retain the lead for now. So the Panthers now with the ball. Peterman, jailbreak blitz from Clemson on third and five. He drops back, retains his composure, and finds Connor for the first down. Another third down on this Panthers drive. Third and one, they find James Connor up the middle for an eight-yard carry. The next play, Connor goes in motion. Of course, we know that kind of spread motion offense the Panthers like to use. And George Aston getting in on the action, the fullback with a seven-yard run. Peterman now in the shotgun, third and five again. Can it be the third huge third down conversion for the Panthers on this drive? It is as Peterman finds Scott Orndorff for the first down. Another third down here, third and four. Quadri Henderson's actually out on this play, so Maurice F -f 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 French is f -f 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 fantastic. Mr. Two Fs in his last name with a four-yard gritty uh, jet sweep as he's able to just get the first down for the Panthers. Second and 10 now. Uh, Peterman drops back. He finds Jester Wea in extremely tight coverage for a 16-yard catch. He's brought down at the two-yard line. Next play, it is first and goal. Peterman fakes the handoff to James Carr, drops back to pass. He looks, he looks, and he finds Mr. Utility Man, the superhuman himself, George Aston for yet another touchdown, and Nate Peterman has given the Panthers a seven-point lead, which they can turn to eight with an extra point attempt. What a throw. He finds Aston. Great play by him to hold on to the ball, and the Panthers eight points ahead of the number two Clemson Tigers, and Jordan Whitehead flies through the gap here and makes a huge sack. We talked about the pressure the Panthers were getting on Watson. Whitehead flies the gap and just levels Deshaun Watson and Clemson are forced to punt the ball. So ensuing pit drive, third and four. Peterman runs the read option, gets in through past the Clemson defense, beats the diving right end, or left end, excuse me, and gets the first down. Next play, he drops back, he looks, he finds Scott Orndorff who's able to pick the ball up it through a couple of tackles for a 17-yard gain and set up the Panthers in the Heinz red zone. Peterman now, first and goal from the two-yard line. What can he do? He's going to drop back to pass. Connor's motion out of the back foot. He looks, he looks, he looks. He rolls out. Peterman, could this be the move? He's brought down. He's fumbled the ball. And Jurgen picks it up for Clemson. It's a huge play. It's the second big fumble Peterman's had on the season. Of course, everyone remembers the one against Florida State in double overtime that cost the Panthers that game. Unfortunately, it is a result of their only loss of the season. So Clemson gets the ball back looking to bring things back to square one if they can drive down the field and score a touchdown. But Gallman throws. It's the interception. Watson throws it and Caprera is able to bring it in. And Deshaun Watson forced to make a touchdown saving tackle. So two interceptions thrown by Deshaun Watson. Well, one interception. One looks like an interception, but it's a fumble. But two turnovers from the Heisman candidate Deshaun Watson. And the Panthers could be on the verge of a monumental upset. 
Unfortunately, they're not able to turn that into a touchdown after starting with first and goal, but Chris Blewett knocks the ball through, and the Panthers now with a two-possession advantage. So Clemson on the ball. Watson looks to throw. He finds Deion Kane for a huge piece of yardage behind Jordan Whitehead, 27 yards into pit territory. But Watson dropping back to pass again on the next play, throws it, finds Deion Kane. He's taking the Panthers for a huge number of yards today, and Watson's out to 232 passing yards. Fourth down, though. Fourth and four for Clemson. Can they come up with a huge conversion? Watson rolling out again. He finds Thompson, and it's incomplete. The Panthers are going to take the ball over on downs. But wait a minute. Bring it back, folks. They are going to review this call, and it is going to be ruled that Thompson, you're going to see he's able to get that right foot down, and Clemson are going to get the first down and retain the ball and keep the chains moving here. So now third and goal from the Pitt Panther five-yard line. Deshaun Watson in the shotgun. Drops back, look to pass, throws the screen to Adam Choice, and he's able to just twirl like a ballerina, stay on his feet, and get into the end zone. So Clemson, though, wanting to get within a field goal, they're going to decide to go for two. Watson again in the shotgun. He drops back. He rolls out. He rolls out. He looks. He finds Williams, his fullback, and he is able to get in, so he brings the score to within three. The Panthers, though, with the ball. Two minutes and 36 seconds to play. Peterman dropping back here. Huge third and six conversion, and instead of just electing to run it and keep the chains moving, Peterman drops back, finds Quadri Henderson, who's able to get the first down for the Panthers. Second and four now. Peterman, as the Panthers look to run the clock, Quadri Henderson gets outside, finally breaks it for a decent size run. He gets about 20, 25 yards on that carry, does Quadri Henderson, and that's going to force Clemson to use a timeout, so they're out of timeouts, a minute 24 to go, third and seven. Peterman finds James Conner. This could be the ball game, and he fights his way for the first down. The Pitt Panthers are going to take this one and upset number two Clemson. James Conner, who else would you expect, fights his way for the first down, and he is our player of the game, 119 yards rushing, five receptions, two touchdowns on the game for James Conner, and the Panthers come away with a massive victory. You have to say, the Clemson game plan really hurt them in this one. They were chunking the Pitt Panthers through the air in the first half, put up 135 passing yards, and in the second half, they did not adjust their game plan to account for that. They were still running on first down, second down, and getting really no yardage other than that one big Gallman run that we showed you. They weren't able to do anything. And, of course, the two Deshaun Watson turnovers really, really hurt them in this one. There's no doubt about that. But it's an absolutely just sensational victory for the Panthers, one that surely is going to buoy them both with their recruits as well as in the ranking. It's a massive victory knocking off an undefeated team at home, obviously, so they had a raucous crowd behind them. And it's just a sensational victory for the Panthers. There's nothing else that can be said. 237 yards rushing. Peterman with two touchdowns, 185 passing. 10 of 17 on third down. That is the real huge thing for the Panthers here and where they really made their money. Five touchdowns on seven attempts in the red zone as well. Clemson with just three touchdowns and two field goals in eight trips to the red zone. So the Panthers did everything they needed to do. Everything came up roses for them for what they needed to do to win. So as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know what you thought of the matchup. It's a longer video than usual because I thought the game deserved it. It was an absolute barn burner of a contest. I ho really hope you guys enjoyed it. It was so much fun to play. And, I mean, I can't say anything enough about just how well the team played and how well our game plan really came out and worked for us. So it was fantastic. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, guys, we will see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye. Hail to Pit.